Well, uh, uh, that uh, may be probably a little bit strange title, experimental detection of quantum transformation, but uh, 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 it has to do with some uh, theory, which I'm not going to talk here about this theory, but I'm going just to design you one experiment which designed such to prove whether this theory is right or wrong. Because the theory is highly mathematical, and I don't want to go into mathematical details. I want to just to tell you something like try that and that, you are going to see that and that, and you see that and that, and prove that the theory is right. So uh, if anybody wants to ask the question, how it comes out, that is a different story. Well, uh, well what is the idea is that the, the classical notion of space and time, all classical notion of space and time are based on the notion of a point or an event, which is a point in, in four-dimensional space-time. A point in one reference frame is a point in any other reference frame. That is in classical theory, and that is also in theory of relativity, because an event in one reference frame is an event in another reference frame. And what is my claim is that, is that that notion is too restrictive, and that quantum theory requires the transformation which transform points into the states which are not localized at the point and other way around. And that you can find in quantum theory such transformation which are much more general than classical transformation, either non-relativistic or relativistic, which all transform points into points or events into events. And if that is true, then say, it is possible to design an experiment which may uh, show you whether how how that that entire thing works. Okay, let me now. Uh, uh, well. Ah yes yes. Thank you thank you very much. Okay, that is what is the simplest classical transformation in one dimension. You you say if you uh, move for say the distance a, then all laws of physics are going to be the same, and the simple tra the translation for the amount tells that the laws of physics are the same in the initial reference frame and in the transformed reference frame. And what we have here, okay, next is really something very similar. That in three-dimensional space you get the same thing, that this generalizes to arbitrary translations, which then include also rotations, and it also generalizes, of course, in the uniform motion, which includes also the, the all reference frames, the laws of physics are the same, either relativistic or non-relativistic, what was explained in the previous lecture. But the point is the same, that in all those transformations, either relativistic or non-relativistic, points are going into points by transformation, or events into events. At one point does not become the line into another transformed transform reference frame. So to say, so to be, to make it extreme. Uh, and in all non-relativistic uh, Galilean transformation, we have one additional property that the shape of the body is the same in all reference frames. It is not in relativistic because you know of this relativistic construction. So the volume of the bone, uh, body effectively is smaller in another reference frame because of the relati I, but in non-relativistic, the, the volume is the same and the shape is the same and all transformations are, they preserve the shape of the body or whatever, what we are, what we are looking for. Well, now uh, that is a little bit of regression in order to explain how that, that uh, experiment what I am proposing to you should be, uh, 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 should be performed. That is just the creation of so-called max zender interferometer, which is designed here. You see here, let me see, okay, I say here. You have here, you have here the source of light, and the source of light comes into some uh, semi, semi transparent mirror. So 50% is reflected, 50% is going through. So he, he reflects.
reflex, T reflex, and it comes here uh, just uh, from this uh, uh, semi, semi transparent mirror, well, in, in this, this, this uh, direction. And if you don't have any sample here, what you do that, because optical parts are the same this direction and the same this direction here, when they come here, they are detected and this detector and none is detected here. I just, I think that the next is more, more probably. Okay, that is just to uh, Ernst Matthew, who people don't know them, but that is the one by whom is known the speed of, of sound, Mach 1, Mach 2, and so on. It is the same scientist who, by, by whom really that is, that is named because he was doing very many different things. Well, he is, he is uh, shown this much general experiment much better. You have here source of light, and then you have here two detectors. One detector here, one detector here. And you can say that light is going here, and then it can reflect here, and then the, the, the fact is that the, if the optical part are here and here is the same uh, through that and that direction, that only this de that detector is going to receive the light and not this one here. Well, in, in the uh, uh, first, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, first century, when, uh, in the 19th century when it was done, it was, uh, argument was, of course, because uh, the uh, light is the uh, uh, wave uh, property, and then you have 50% of waves uh, in Maxwell equations coming here, 50% here, and they here interfere constructively or, constructively or de destructively. But now we know that light is really uh, built up from the particles, which are photons, so you can have experiments with a single photon which comes from here, and that single photon really splits into two parts and interferes in himself here and uh, brings up here constructive interference, and there is no way how you can explain that by assuming that it is going this way, that, that by what is usually said, that there is 50% of change of the reflection. It is not true. Really, the wave function is split into two wave functions, and there is nothing like that, like 50% uh, probability of reflection or not, but that single photon is going simultaneously this direction and this direction. Because if you don't keep that idea, you cannot explain how only that detector re always re receives your photon, and not this one, because if it were going, for example, 50% probability to reflect, it would reflect here, reflect here, and now here it would have 50% probability to come through, 50% to be <coughs> deflected, and you, you would have detect the photon depending here and here on both sides. But you always detect it always only here, which proves that this photon is going one photon, not in some way like some people say. It, it is really going simultaneously both, both parts, with this part and this part, because otherwise that Max Werner interferometer would not perform like it really performs. Okay, let me now, uh, that is just introduction uh, to give you more clearer what is the idea behind the, this idea how to measure this, uh, this uh, 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 non-quantum effect. That is again this interferometer, that's how it is usually used. It is used uh, uh, in that way that you have here some sample and you uh, put here also that sample inside some glass container. Here you take the, the same glass container in order to compensate for all uh, effects what are here and here, and here you have sample inside here, and then because of different, different uh, 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 lengths, wavelength uh, in here, uh, refraction of light here and here, you obtain two pictures 
one picture here of the temple, one here, which are really like positive and negative of each other. And that is how it is used <coughs> usually to make some measurement of, of uh, properties of some, uh, some uh, 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 samples which you want to investigate. Okay, that is what I did say when you have a single photon which comes from here, it's really when that optical part is the same as this one here, they are the same length, always this detector is going to, to uh, register the photon, never this one here. So that means that the photon which comes from here is really going simultaneously through this part and through this part, since otherwise you could not explain the, uh, here the, uh, how they interfere constructively only here and not here, otherwise you would have 50% times here or 50% times here detected, but you are detected always here, which means I repeat again that one photon is going simultaneously through both parts. Okay. Well, now I uh, uh, want to uh, tell you some other things how, what is usually measured in all standard measurement of the photon which we have. Photon is really something like, has something like this wave packet, and you have inside very fast oscillations which gives you information about the frequency or the wavelength which is equivalent to the photon. What is usually measured, standard optical instrument, what they measure, they detect the direction of the photon, that means from which side it comes, that means if you go on the sky from that star and so on, then they measure frequency of that photon, uh, and then they measure what I did not uh, including, of course, frequency uncertainty, which is usually very small, and including also polarization of the photon. Polarization is really the uh, direction uh, opposite to the if photon is going this direction, it really uh, represents uh, the, uh, uh, the movement of electric and magnetic field uh, perpendicular to that direction. And, and uh, uh, what is the direction of electric field? That is by definition the polarization of this photon. Okay, what is now <coughs> my contention is that this measurement, in no standard measurement, was measured the shape of that wave packet. Not the frequency, not the distance between those things, but how is that shape and what information might we receive from that shape of, of this, this wave packet. And for example, well, that is really what mathematics says, which I told you I'm not going into that mathematics, but the mathematics of this uh, idea of notion of quantum space-time tells you that in different quantum space-time that shape should be different. I mean, uh, so that means that, that by measuring that shape and uh, registering the difference of that shape, you may really register whether that photon which was sent from somewhere was initially in some uh, uh, different space-time, uh, quantum space-time, which is not the same as ours. What does this mean experimentally? Most information what we have from the universe is really from hydrogen atoms, because hydrogen <coughs> atoms are uh, very, very many, most atoms are in hydrogen atoms, and we observe really transitions between some energy levels of hydrogen atoms. And you can observe <coughs> one such transition between hydrogen atoms on the Earth and measure, say, by that method which I uh, try to propose you, the shape of the wave packet of that emission uh, by that hydrogen atom of Earth and measure the same thing of hydrogen, of, 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 of light which comes from the <coughs> transition of hydrogen atoms between the same energy levels which are somewhere far in the space. And I claim the shape of the wave function is going to be the same different, which would mean that that 
a, a star which emitted that hydrogen atom is really contained in different, not only classical space, that means in different directions from us and different distance from us, because that is classical space, but in different quantum space, if that comes true. And now the question is how to measure the shape experimentally. And is it possible to measure the shape? So what I say this notion of quantum space-time predicts the change of the photon wave bucket envelope. For example, that is one example, that, change is, is, that might be <coughs> here. <coughs> when it comes, it is received, it looks like here. And what I want to emphasize, that no standard optical interface detects wave bucket envelope. Why not? Because nobody was interested in that. Because nobody did see what is the interest of measuring that. It is stupid. If you don't have some idea why that might be interesting. And that is what I'm telling you why that should be interesting. And now comes the real question, how experimentally to measure the shape the, of the other how you should design an instrument which should be able to measure that, not to measure input speed polarization, which usually is measured, but to measure the shape of the effect. That is different, different things to be measured than the one which usually is done. And that is really the uh, uh, suggested instrument which uh, might, might measure that which is uh, in some sense similar to Malgenian experiment. Here is the photon source. <coughs> Here is a half sil silver mirror. So the photon wave function is uh, partly reflected, partly coming here. And then, uh, but here you have uh, the thing that that distance, uh, d over two, is changeable. And depending on the distance, optical path through here, 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 and here, differ from the optical path through here, and you can, the difference of optical path, you can change, and as you change the difference, you detect how your photon is arriving, or, and detector is B1 and detector B2. And of course, this probability of detector B1 and B2 is going to depend on that distance here. So you have to sketch your experimental result as a function of that distance here. If that distance is zero, you have really max zero instrument. And then you are go going to obtain more max zero because if that, that is really max zero, that, that distance is zero. But if that distance is not zero, you are going to obtain something else. Well, that is now the, what is mathematical result. That wave bucket <coughs> mathematically can be written as an exponential function which incorporates the input and polarization of that wave bucket. That means distance between those things. So that is this exponential uh, exponent e chi x. And then f or from x is really that angle. That is how mathematically you can express your wave function with a particular momentum k. Now, what is the main function which in this mathematics comes out? It's really this integral, which is integral of this envelope, envelope function f of x. That integral f of x multiplied by x plus d. You remember d is that difference between distance on two pages when I showed you the instrument. So that d comes from zero. When it is zero, it is really like one zero instrument. But then that is really some function of d that here, and d, d depends on the other one. And what is found out that 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 uh, function this e d is determined when you remember that two uh, two detectors which I showed you before. Before you have d one and d d two. And if V D1 is probabili probability of detector D1 to find the photon, V D2 is probability of detector D2, that combination, 2 V1 minus 1, is exactly by mathematics 
V D multiplied by cosinus chi D. So that probability, which is experimental measure, gives you the uh, uh, that gives you the shape of the wave function, give you information about that shape. So by measuring those two probabilities, you really obtain information about envelope, which I tell you how, how to obtain it. So G is determined by experimental probabilities, VD1 and VD2, which are those two detectors which you have there. Let me see now, next. Okay, that is really just to make it more, more clear. Uh, you have uh, this probability depends on the distance B. It is the half because B is V distance plus V distance. This is really how, that is why I put here D divided by two. Because V2 plus V2, is, that is how much longer is the space. So, so uh, this uh, uh, probability depends on the distance and that is exactly the formula because you measure that, that VD1 is probability of this detector to receiving a photo, VD2 probability of this one. If you measure that as a function of D, you obtain info information about VD, VD, which gives you the information about the other. This is now an example, which is just mathematical example, which uh, can be an example which can be uh, exactly solved if uh, uh, that is the wave function of such a shape that is classical wave function which is mathematically given by this expression. Uh, that is uh, the part which uh, gives you input of the photon and that gives you the shape of the wave function. This, this is really this shape, this function here, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, situated at the position x equal uh, uh, x zero. This is standard shape of the wave particle. This is really Gaussian function, which is usually, usually considered as such, the standard shape. And this shape, if you calculate this response VD, it comes out that that uh, must be uh, uh, such a, a function of this distance D, experimental. This really a, a, a exponential function where you see that it equals one when d equals zero. So here it is one because probability can, can, can be maximally one. It cannot be bigger than one. But if d is bigger or smaller, then it is smaller than one. It decreases, as you see, left and right. Well, this is another example. It is just like artificial. Which is wave packet, which is like this artificial mathematical example, but good for 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 demonstration, uh, which is uh, like a box. It is not not now uh, this uh, standard wave function, but this which here is uh, amplitude is zero. Then it starts to be oscillation with the similar amplitude some time, and then it stops. And that is mathematical expression of this this function. Uh, that is wave packet that has square wave shape. And if you calculate for that wave packet, what should be, that is what, how your experiment should respond to this. You see, your experimenter will be now completely different. Again, at d equals zero is probability one or minus one, uh, depending on, uh, on the detector d1 or d2. And that is going, uh, that is mathematical expression to the probability, so that instrument registers probability this here, which can be measured, and if you measure this here, that really means that the shape of your wave function which you are coming is uh, that which I did show there before, square. And now, just one more example, if your envelope is something like more complicated, like this one here, so that is your wave function six, wave packet of this shape, such a wave packet gives you the result, which is here. You see uh, uh, that that is also a different shape than both those shapes pre uh, previously given, and 
let us compare all the three. You see the wave factors of this shape, the other wave factor should give that response on your measuring instrument. This wave factor should give that response, and this wave factor should give uh, that response. So wave factor shapes, those are probability amplitudes which are this, that instrument, how it should measure those probability amplitudes. What you really uh, is, is most important is envelope of those probability amplitudes, and that is what is different. That is this envelope in this case, envelope is this here is in this case, and here is in this case. So different wave factor shapes produce different values of that is envelope is this function VD probability. Here are many, many oscillations inside, which I showed you previously. Inside are many oscillations, but you can calculate the envelope of those oscillations, and that is really what matters. Here are also many oscillations up and down, and here up and down, but the envelope of those oscillations is here like that, here like that, here like that. So that means that each different shape of the wave factors produces you experimentally different envelope in this measuring instrument. So you can, with this instrument, you can deduce what was the envelope of your wave factor. And now if you measure, for example, in that way, envelope of some definite transition between hydrogen atoms from the air, and you find experimentally that that envelope is like that, and if you measure the same transition between two hydrogen atoms, taking into account uh, uh, this because uh, uh, count relative velocity, which is very easily taken into account uh, because all stars are moving from us in galaxies and so on. And if you find out that that envelope is different, that means that that uh, uh, hydrogen atom on that star was emitted in a different quantum space. That means that star on that galaxy is not in the same classical space as well as star and other galaxy. That is, in addition to these classical differences, which, which are distance from us, direction from us, and so on, those are just classical transformations. Here I am talking about some additional quantum transformations which require this interpretation. Well, now I just wanted to show you that, which I did not go into details, that, that all things should be a little bit more complicated with real photos because they have uh, electric and magnetic field which oscillate one uh, perpendicular to another, like this here. So you can, it is just a mathematical complication, you can include such considerations also in that measurement process which I told you there. So this uh, method, uh, a wave uh, parted under of determination, that can be easily generalized to, spin, to be spin sensitive with appropriate spin filter as well as to be more sensitive uh, on the shape of the wave packet envelope uh, using uh, not just two phases independent what I show you, but more than two phases which can be easily done, which is just a technical problem which is not important for, for the explanation of what, what I I wanted to do. So that is as a conclusion, wave packet envelope detector detection method can be also applied to the detection of other particles. I did uh, say only photons, not only photons, that means electrons, protons, and so on. The same method and same uh, general principles and the notion of a point and even in the generalization uh, to the quantum space-time uh, associated with four-dimensional classical space-time is not invariant under quantum transformations. That I did not show you here, but uh, I want to emphasize that you uh, make through all mathematics, you find out that those quantum transformations which are responsible for such change of shapes do not transform point into point or event into event but they just do uh, three, four, uh, more exactly the uh, same. 
point-like wave function, that means wave functions which are very closely narrowed to some point, is some wave function which is extended, or other way around. So that means in the classical limit, because you know that in quantum theory there is no such state as uh, the particle at the point, because such particle would uh, have position uncertainty zero, and that particle would have, according to uncertainty relations, uh, uh, uncertainty of input infinite, because uh, uh, probability of position uncertainty and input uncertainty must be always bigger than g over two. That means if you have the particle exactly at one position, that particle must have infinite input, so it must have infinite energy. That means that is really impossible. This, this is one idealization. All what you have, you have never particle at one point. It always must occupy some space. When, uh, our idea point really means that that is the wave functions which basically narrowly concentrated on that point. And it is never that exact point. So the notion of the point, or even, uh, uh, is not invariant under quantum transformation and the realization of the suggested experiments should hence provide an experimental proof that no hidden variable theory is possible. Because all hidden variable theories <coughs> are based on the idea of the point. It is that uh, the particle is really going through some uh, line in the space, that means at each uh, moment of time it is in some particular point, the only thing is we don't know what line. That is the idea of hidden variable theories. That proves that that is uh, possible. Because what is a point in one quantum reference frame is not a point in another. That means what is a line in one quantum reference frame, because line just consists of the point, just a segment of point, is not a line in another reference frame. So that means that the entire idea is completely wrong. Okay, uh, and that is what I claim. This method should provide a new spectroscopic method to supplement already known spectroscopic methods, which would really measure uh, uh, one additional fantasy, which is the shape of the wave puppet and not the input, the polarization, direction, and so on, which all presently known spectroscopic methods do. Okay, thank you. Wait a moment. Uh -huh. you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 just uh, speak to you. Thank you very much for the interesting talk. Um, yeah, wh why, why don't you carry out these experiments or why are they, they not being carried out? I mean, that's an interesting yeah. approach. Uh, just the use, I think, uh, we have to enregister this. Uh, uh, well, uh, there are uh, in the world many experiments which could do that. I am not really uh, sure whether such an experiment could be done uh, here in Croatia, whether the instruments are, but that surely could be done. If you ask me whether I, I should be an experimentalist, I'm not experimentalist because you must have some different skill to perform that. I just make a suggestion what should be measured and how should be measured, which a good experimentalist always can do. Yes, that's right. That's right. No, because, okay, that is another thing. For some private reason, I never published that. And now I decided to publish, I, I uh, soon publish it. For that was really some completely different story why for about uh, 40 or so years I did not publish that idea. But it is written in my PhD, that's right. Yes, uh, Professor Schickit. Thank you. I didn't quite understand why is it necessary that every hidden variable theory includes necessarily the notion of a pointed event. It, it, it seems that that, that was your claim. claim. Yeah. That was the claim. OK. 
Okay, it, it maybe I was not exact. Most hidden variable theories include the notion of the point. Uh, can you tell me one hidden variable theory which doesn't include the no, notion? No, that's true, but I think there should be a possibility of hidden variable theory which does not include it. Yes, that should be, but I did not uh, have found in the literature any such which does not explicitly, uh, explicitly comes down to the idea that there should be some point. I did not find such such hidden by I, I don't know whether you know about it. No, I don't know. Okay. Okay. I, maybe it is possible, but I don't know about such such a thing. Professor Jean-Marc Cleville Leblanc. Yes, w would you please tell us exactly what you mean by your quantum space-time? Yes. Uh, by a quantum space-time, I mean that uh, each uh, uh, notion of space and notion of space-time is really based on the theory. When the theory in the history changed, our notion of space and time changed. Like your lecture also said, when Galileo's idea changed to Einstein's ideas, and Einstein's theory uh, uh, required different notion of space and time than Galileo's notion of space and time. So each theory requires its own uh, idea of space and time. And what is my claim is that quantum theory, which is a new theory, requires a new idea of space and time. And up to now, nobody made a space-time structure which is adequate to quantum theory. They just borrow space-time structure from classical theory and import it into quantum theory. That is what is really done. Uh, except of just one, uh, just one small, uh, small twist which is uh, not really uh, so much, it is, it is important, but it is small twist. It is co concerning the states of uh, uh, spin one half particles, which you know if you make rotation by 2 pi of that state, the wave function changes the sign, which is contrary to classical ideas of space, because in classical idea, if you anything rotated by 2 pi, the state should be the same. In that respect, quantum theory, uh, quantum theory is different from classical prediction, and many people notice that and so on, but nobody really uh, put uh, much thought about why in that particular case Quantum theory has different prediction than classical theory because in quantum theory, rotation of the spin or the wave function by 2 pi uh, translates into minus, minus the spin or as you well know, and, and then, uh, but in classical theory that is not possible. The, uh, the first answer to that, which was done by some physicists, is that that difference is not important because they claim what we measure we measure expectation values of wave function, observator and wave functions, which is not psi or psi, and then you have wave functions left and right, product of two wave functions, and if that psi changes the sign, from that doesn't change the sign, so you don't, have, you don't have any difference, so it doesn't change. But they, then later some physicists did think much more carefully about that, and uh, made the experiment which really proved experimentally that the rotation for 2 pi is physically recognizable state. Then when you, uh, if you know that experiment, when you uh, shoot one particle which has spin one half into magnetic field, and then by quantum theory it can go by two phases, and in one phase it is going uh, between, uh, in, in uh, inside very strong inhomogeneous magnetic field, an inhomogeneous magnetic field rotates the spin because spin is a, a magnetic moment, and if you adjust that rotation exactly such, that rotation is 2 pi, that means you rotate it for exactly 2 pi, but uh, in, in, uh, in quantum theory, that uh, rotation of 2 pi of the wave function psi is going to create you minus psi, and then you make after that uh, uh, those two, uh, uh, two branches of your wave function, one which is not subject to rotation, one which is uh, to interfere with each other. Interference is going to be different if you rotate for 2 pi or not. And that is experimentally proved. That experiment was done. 
So uh, I think uh, the claim is, uh -huh, yes, that the uh, time and space are different in uh, classical Newtonian mechanics and in electrodynamics. That's, uh, uh, and the, the, the claim is that in quantum mechanics also space and time should be different. Well, ju just two comments. Uh, all right, you, if you want to say that uh, it could be interesting to have another notion of space-time in quantum mechanics, as a program, or as a, that's all right. But what you say seemed to me more definite since you, at one time, you stated explicitly, according to the notion of quantum space-time, distant stars and galaxies should be in a different four-dimensional space-time. Which means that I, I thought you had the notion of quantum space-time. Yes, but I did not talk to you in here about that. Sorry? You said that you're not speaking about that now. This lecture, I did not speak about that. This lecture was just e dedicated to the special experiment with which I, uh, in, in, in the mathematics of space time, predicts that that experiment proves that. But I, I did not go into that mathematics. I did go only to experiment, say, make that experiment, find out, and tell me if I'm wrong. Experiment is ultimate judge. I have a second comment. Uh, the point seems to me that, uh, strangely enough, in some sense, quantum mechanics did not, up to now, require us to change very deeply our notions of space and time. It seems that if we go to a more abstract idea than the usual one, that is putting the accent not so much on space and time themselves, but rather on the structure of space and time as expressed by the symmetry groups, which you mentioned, by the way, when you say invariance of the laws of physics. If you talk about space and time classically as governed by the, uh, what we call the Poincaré group, the Lorentz group, rotation, translation, and so on, this is quite sufficient in quantum theory and even lets you to prove very deep theorem like the existence of antiparticles, the spin and statistic connection, and so on and so on. And even more, if you look at space and time from that point of view, I do not agree with you that the rotation of 4 pi is a specific quantum phenomenon. Just look at that. Even in ordinary space, you can show the difference between a 2 pi and a 4 pi rotation. You don't need to go to quantum mechanics. It's already true in classical one. I know that. And that is exactly your argument about why the people dismiss that. But what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about that thing. I'm talking about new idea of space and time. In that idea, and I, I tell you that many of, of, uh, of uh, paradoxes in quantum theory, which are uh, today uh, paradoxes, like the entanglement paradox, from the point of view of this quantum space on time, in another quantum space time reference frame, those two points, one here and one here, are at the same point in this uh, reference frame, quantum reference frame, and there is no paradox. In, in our reference frame, those are two points which are distant from each other, and you touch here and here, it, it, it answers. But in this, so to say, natural reference frame, which explains this effect, that those two events are the, the, the same point in space, and so there is no paradox. I did not touch about that, because I did not talk about the, this idea of space-time, only about experiment how to prove it. And I repeat it, only about experiment how to prove it. The idea is different thing. Are there some other discussions? So you can. Thank you. Uh, I have a question uh, regarding um, the experiment. So uh, to my mind, what you presented could be also formulated in classical electrodynamics as uh, experiment with modulated light. 
So a kind of having the light of a certain frequency and then perform a modulation to get an envelope, for example. But of course this involves many, ma many photons. Uh, so I want to know the difference. I want to know the difference uh, or the similarity and dissimilarity with such, uh, such experiment, which would probably show in a certain uh, kind of envelope. Uh, yeah. So to, to kind of measure the, the, the modulation frequency. So if, if this were correct, uh, so um, uh, imagine we would have light, light with a constant frequency and would um, shorten this modulation time to get smaller and smaller uh, envelopes. So theoretically, when, when should we come to a photon? Like uh, th the dimension of a photon, if I understand correctly there, should be greater than the uh, wavelength of <coughs> light, if I understand correctly the frequency there. So can you comment on that? These are a few questions which uh, I want you to clarify to me. Thank you. Uh, you are really mixing uh, the, uh, so to say, the lot of photons with the, pro with the experiment of a single photon. That, I that is a single photon experiment which is repeated many, many times in order to get a crystal picture. And if you are talking about just a single photon, a wave function which represents a single photon depends on the sharp sharpness of the energy. If that energy is very, very sharp, uh, the single photon, that wave function is very long and it can be few meters long. That is, if you have uh, thousands and millions of waves inside that a single photon wave function. And that uh, experiment, experimentally that is well is established. The photon is not just few wavelengths. Uh, uh, long, it's his wave function. It is millions of wave functions long. I, if you have very precise, like we have for different transitions, because if there is a transition, for example, in hydrogen atom, the longer the uh, expectation value from the transition, the sharper is the photon line. Because if you have, if you have in the limit, if that would be infinite, the photon line would be exactly sharp, and in theory that would be the wave coming from minus infinity to infinity, but that it does not exist. But uh, one, uh, that experiment is suggested by one photon, then uh, one photon gives you just one point, that is detector just clicks. Then another photon, detector clicks. And then you have to repeat that many, many, really thousand times to get the uh, statistics, because you don't have like classical experiment, the uh, uh, electromagnetic field which really in its depth contains uh, millions of photons. Mm -hmm. Today, you, one can perform experiment by a single photon. That, uh, in history, that was needed to have such a strong field that you have million photons to perform, perform experiment. But today, it can be done by a single photon. Are there some additional questions? No more questions? So, uh, the now we have a coffee break, half an hour coffee break, because uh, the coffee is waiting in the library. So I invite you to come to the uh, third floor, and then uh, in the library, the, the coffee break some cakes. It, it lasts exactly half an hour. So the time uh, uh, we have, it's uh, at